Hi, I'm Kelly Kramer. And I'm Scott Sipker. Welcome to the Open Prairie. And our latest edition of Iowa Outdoors. Coming up on Iowa Outdoors. We hit Iowa's professional disc golf circuit. Eat our way across the outdoors. And spend quality time with an urban photographer in Iowa's capital city. And explore a trail in a minute. We'll have all that and more. So sit tight, Iowa Outdoors is about to begin. Funding for Iowa Outdoors is provided by the Claude P. Small, Catherine Small Cousins, and William Carl Cousins Fund at the Lincoln Way Community Foundation in Clinton County to support nature programming on Iowa Public Television. And by the Alliant Energy Foundation. Many of Iowa's natural wonders you'll find on Iowa Public Television can be found in Iowa Outdoors Magazine, the Iowa DNR's premier resource for conservation, education, and recreation activities. Subscription information can be found online at iowadnr.gov. Our expanded seventh season of Iowa Outdoors continues to bring you more stories from across our state. It's a journey that takes us from culinary expeditions to our photogenic capital city. But first, we'll explore a sport that continues to bring people of all ages outdoors. The state of Iowa is secretly a powerhouse in one of the nation's quickest rising sports, disc golf. Des Moines plays host to an annual major disc golf tournament complete with prize money and the coveted championship disc. And you may even run into a few homegrown national champions. Disc golf is, is it's huge in the state of Iowa. I played the world championships here in 2004. There's, you know, probably 20 good pros in the state that, uh, you know, play for money all the time, and they're all here. Um, we, have a, we have a lot of uh, really good amateurs. These are probably some of the best courses in the state of Iowa here, right here in Des Moines. If you were to pick the sport for the state of Iowa, a case could be made for disc golf. Just raw number of courses and players were probably top five in the nation. You know, they started in 78 and it's been growing, you know, 10, 15 percent a year, every year. The, you know, the money's growing, the participation's growing, you know, just the recreational play's growing and, you know, it's just, it gets more legitimate by the year. But more than participation, Iowa is also home to some exceptional players. You know, we have a lot of you know, nationally renowned players here. We have a lady who's three-time former world champion. We have the five-time world putting champion here. So, you know, one of the guys is probably top three in the world distance-wise, and, and uh, so lots of talent here for sure. So what may seem like a casual activity has led some expertly skilled Iowans to become career disc golfers. I was kind of like, at, as an amateur, fun, getting used to the sport, and then all of a sudden I was like, yeah, I would like to take this further. I went to the University of Northern Iowa on a full scholarship to play softball, so I was really competitive to start with, and I just decided that this might be that unique opportunity to be a professional athlete, and now I travel the world, and it is my sole job. Why is disc golf so popular in Iowa? Well, actually, it's because small towns and parks across the state have embraced the sport almost by accident, sowing the seeds of a disc golf renaissance. Des Moines great, Quad City's great, Iowa City, Cedar Rapids, but uh, I direct them, I say, you know, every small town along I-80, you know, there's a great course in Colfax, Newton, Grinnell, uh, there's one at this Lake Iowa, exit 211 in the middle of nowhere. Like, the small towns, a lot of them will have, like, a city park, and it's kind of their one signature city park with beautiful old trees, and, but well manicured, and those are great. Those are what really make a course, and we're lucky to have those. And many of the players who take up disc golf come to it from a similar outdoor sport. Oh, well, I was a competitive golfer for many years and uh, figured out it was much less expensive to do disc golf. So I cut way back on one and got serious about another. There's a lot of similarities. Um, you know, we have pars. We have, you know, actually for what you throw, there's drivers, you know, are very fast, uh, kind of difficult to throw. There's mid ranges that fly a little bit straighter and then there's putters that have a blunter edge that will uh, go into the basket a little bit. 
one of the other bigger differences from golf is that you know you pick up one or two frisbees and you go out and play a whole round with it no problem you know whereas you go to a golf course you probably need the bag clubs you know the whole deal disc golf's just so much more efficient and then playing of course is free you know you can pick it up wherever you want stop wherever you want just like traditional golf the ease of play can be deceptive and frustrating one of my favorite lines is, whatever you're bad at in life, you're going to be bad at in disc golf. So <laughs> if you don't have much composure or a good perspective, that's going to show on the disc golf course. When I first started playing disc golf and started to get competitive with it, I improved the same way I did when I played golf, and that is I worked on my putting and my, my short shots first, and uh, then I worried about how far I could throw it. Because, you know, the first tendency would be, oh, so this is, uh, this is the, the biggest driver you have? Well, that's not gonna work for you. You have to work up to things like that, build your arm speed and, and skill level before you start grabbing the biggest piece of plastic that's available. And just get yourself a driver and a mid-range and a putter. You can probably get started for less than $25 and just get out to the course and try. And uh, disc golfers are really very friendly people. I mean, if you approach them and ask them, they're usually always really receptive to, you know, giving you a tip or two. And once you feel that rip and you throw it the right way, you'll be hooked. Every year, the Des Moines Disc Golf Club invites players of every skill level to the Walnut Ridge Recreation Area in Johnston for the Des Moines Challenge a weekend-long event that offers a chance at trophies and thousands of dollars in prize money. It costs $105 to play in the open division. I think there's 41 players in that division. First place winner today is going to be taking, taking home $1,225. And that's thanks to our sponsors and, uh, you know, and of course, their entry fees. So it'd be a pretty nice payday for him. While not everyone at the challenge is after the prize money, there are some serious golfers on hand. You know, sport has a lot of money in it now. You know, there's some guys making some real money, you know, tens of thousands. The guys that are here, you know, they're at the national events, the world championships, um, you know, guys who have won major, major tournaments here. And with top level talent in town, Walnut Ridge does an excellent job representing Iowa. Well, we, we call this our country club course. It's beautiful. The Army Corps of Engineers takes fantastic care of it. It is moderate difficulty. Uh, I've seen as low as a 46 thrown out here. So by course par, that's 13 under par. And anyway, that's just crazy good. As the challenge pressed on, Des Redding took down the women's master's division. But to her, the weekend is about more than winning. It's also about camaraderie and showcasing why Iowa is a great ambassador for the sport. I think the great thing about playing disc golf is you can play outside and then you can play with anybody. You can play with your family, you can play with your friends, and it's free to recreate. So I was always been a real promoter of uh, green spaces, and it is per capita the first in the world with the amount of courses per capita. So it'll show you that the recreational opportunities are fantastic. On the men's side of the tournament, the day ended with a three-way shootout before St. Louis native Zach Johnson took home the big prize. And similar to Dez, Zach loves the sport for the community the game has established. The people are amazing. That's what really keeps me in disc golf. You know, it, it can't get old just because you feel like you're seeing family everywhere you go. Every weekend I see people I know and, and it's just worth it, you know. It's just good people. So with its accessible nature and nearly 200 courses in the state, disc golf's popularity appears ready to take off. The thing about disc golf is it's just keeps growing and it's gonna keep getting into the mainstream and it's, it's a slow climb, it's a steady climb, but the thing is we're never going anywhere. I mean, there's just no ceiling on it. One of the most valuable lessons any outdoor explorer can learn is that not everything in nature is intended for safe human consumption. But many plants, vegetation, and wildlife could be your next meal. Some Iowans are exploring these newfound culinary adventures. <laughs> Kathy Dice is passionate about plants, specifically wild edibles, the plants and weeds that you may discover springing up in your backyard, around your garden, or along a nature trail. So this is one of the funnest ones. This is wood sorrel. It grows in everyone's garden. This is in fact considered a noxious weed in Iowa. You can just pick some of it and start eating it as you go along. Mm. It is such a fun plant. I've always been interested in being outside and 
eating the plants that you find growing wild is a really cool way to interact with nature because it's a really intimate thing when you're actually eating little bits of nature. Kathy took us on a tour around her home in rural Louisa County, Red Fern Farm, and within a short walk from her front door, she showed us numerous wild plants growing in the yard that we can eat. So this is plantain. This is another really good one to learn. It grows in people's yards. In fact, we've got some right down here, some little tender ones growing. In fact, people will be like, oh, I've got that all over my yard. And it's like, well, yeah. And this, I like to tell people, is food, fun, and medicine. Violets also commonly grow in yards. Blue and white violets are the most common and tasty. Violets are loaded with vitamins, iron, and calcium, so they're good for you too. If you eat about five violet leaves of this size, you're gonna get as much vitamin C as if you eat a full big orange from Hy-Vee. Very, very nutritious and very, very mild tasting. It tastes like lettuce. It's hard to find a fresher, more natural, unmodified food than picking a wild plant yourself. And harvesting wild edibles is free or low cost food. And for people who don't garden, this is a way that you can actually get the benefits of gardening with going out and collecting all this fresh food. To me, it's always a sad thing how many people don't know all the cool things growing around them. The lore about all these scary, itchy, terrible plants that are out there, people learn really quick. But so many other people won't learn the really fun things or all the really cool things they could be eating in their garden. And that's really pitiful. It's very important to know what you're eating. And be sure nobody has sprayed any chemicals like Roundup on the plants. Don't go and experiment with, this plant kind of looks right, maybe I'll start nibbling on it. Not a good idea. It's always, you always want to identify things really, really well before you start putting them in your mouth. The American persimmon commonly grows in Missouri and Arkansas, but you'll find wild persimmon in Iowa, south of Highway 30. As the persimmons ripen in the fall, they turn from green to bright orange. They're deliciously sweet, almost like candy. It's amazing, the, the bouquet of flavors. Um, some things will taste like apple skins or sunflower seeds. Other things will taste like green beans. Some things will taste like um, a really ripe green pepper. So it, it, it's really neat in the plant world. It is a huge variety of flavors. A common weed you might see in your garden is purslane. It's a succulent recognizable by its thick red stems and fleshy green leaves. This is maybe my favorite wild edible plant. This is lamb's quarter. And again, another plant that's on the noxious weed list of Iowa. But this is a plant that has actually been feeding people in Iowa for thousands of years. Lamb's quarter is another very nutritious wild edible, maybe second only to violets. You can eat lamb's quarter raw, and the flavor is a little bit like green beans. I, but I always think of it as lamb's quarter. It's a very delicious plant. <laughs> it's so good. The juice from touch me not or jewelweed can act as a painkiller or help protect against poison ivy, but it's also a wild edible. Red buds are an awesome tree. You can enjoy those beautiful pink blossoms in the spring. You can eat the pink blossoms in the spring, and you can even enjoy eating those little seed pods later on. And it's a native Iowa tree. I really like red buds. They're a great little tree. As the seasons go by, different wild edibles will be available to eat. The peak time to eat certain plants and weeds may be a short time, as little as two weeks. Plants will vary greatly in their flavor. The same kind of plant in the same county will vary greatly in the flavor. It's like with apples. So if you try a plant, and you don't like how it tastes, don't give up on it, try a different plant, and even go to a different area and try a different county to try a different plant. Kathy also has elderberry on her farm, a delicious mild berry, hazelnut shrubs, chestnuts with spiny protective burrs, and pawpaw trees, a fruit tree native to Iowa that grows wild all across the state. They're sometimes called the prairie banana or Iowa banana. We consider it the largest native fruit that you're gonna find growing in Iowa. It's also 
the only fruit in Iowa that is in the tropical families. And when you get a ripe pawpaw and open it up, the overall flavor will be like banana. But our favorite ones have overtones of pineapple and mango in them as well. Common milkweed is something monarch caterpillars love to feed on. But guess what? You can eat it too. When you find a nice, clean little leaf like this, you can pick it and go ahead and just start eating on it. And the tender little ones are actually a little sweet. You can eat the young sprouts of milkweed when it first comes out. You can eat the tender young leaves up at the top, top at any time. You can eat the little seed pods before the seeds inside turn brown. You can even eat the flower blossoms when they're tight and green or when they're almost turning purple. They're really sweet. Those, they're like eating broccoli. Foraging for wild edibles can be a one-time adventure, a fun hobby, or a way of life. There's a cornucopia of tasty treats and healthy vegetation all around you in the Iowa outdoors. Iowa's capital city of Des Moines may be our state's most urban setting, but that doesn't mean it falls short of outdoor photographic opportunities. One Iowa transplant discovered it was the perfect place to polish his skills and lend them to others. I can take 50 pictures of the same exact spot and they can all look different. For Mirza Kudic, his ideal outdoor environment may be surrounded by concrete. I like the skyline. Um, it's just, I think it looks great. All the colors, all the lights look great. In his adopted hometown of Des Moines, he's found plentiful photographic opportunities. Um, we have a building there that changes colors, you know, depending on what they decide to light it with, so you can do that. And there's just a lot of different angles that you can go to around town to get a different picture. So it's just, you can get the same skyline, but you can get it in 50 different positions and every picture will look different. Pay a visit to Iowa's capital city at sunset and you just may find Mirza perched atop one of numerous parking garages, making it his own outdoor camera platform. You know, cameras have their auto bracket, but I like to kind of do my do my own, however I like it to be done, and then just see what I come up with. Mirza's love for Iowa and Des Moines comes from a special admiration gleaned from years of adjustment. His family immigrated from Bosnia to New York in the mid-1990s, eventually settling in the American heartland in Iowa. Years later, Mirza would return to photograph his native Bosnia, but Des Moines is his new home. After serving in the U.S. Army in Iraq, Mirza returned to Iowa and developed a photographic passion. He became particularly enthralled by Iowa's Golden Dome. I'm trying to expose for the building, the grass, but I want to catch that movement of the clouds going. It's going to add more drama to the picture. So the nice thing about a filter like this, we're in broad daylight, but I can shoot for 25 seconds with no problems. Most of the time, well, before I go to the area, I have a picture in my head. So I know how I'm gonna want it to look, and I go there and I can pretty much know exactly what I'm gonna do, how many pictures I'll need to put together to get to that final image that I had in my head. Sometimes it works perfect, sometimes I will go out there for an hour and photograph and I come back home and I don't have anything that I want to keep. Mirza prefers to utilize the full arsenal of tools that complement modern DSLR gear. He takes long exposures with thick neutral density filters to modify light and blur motion for outdoor elements like clouds or water. So I have everything I need. I have my foreground, and I have in here my sky. 
and then I'll put those together to get rid of the stoplight and the road work and I'll have a great picture. Combined with high dynamic range exposure for shadowy foregrounds and bright skies, Mirza's images are processed in his own style and sheen. Everyone's a critic. Um, everyone has their own, and you run into the purists, the guys that think that the only way it's photography, if there's no editing at all, it's right out of the camera, it's not. But those pictures, when you take them at night, they can look okay, but I think you're cheating yourself. And especially if you're selling those pictures, you are cheating that client because you're not giving them the best that you can do. That's just how I feel. I have a really nice color in the background, and with the helicopter landing, it might make for an interesting photo. He's embraced social media, posting his Des Moines Scenics on a daily basis. Mirza has also helped gather local photographers to share tips, tricks, and spend time together with like-minded Iowans. This is the second time we've done this here in Des Moines, and so far we have a good crowd. We'll have more people out here show up uh, later for the sunset. It's going to be about another two hours before the sun starts coming down, so that gives everyone a chance to chat and meet and talk about photography and actually talk to real people instead of Facebook pictures, you know. If anyone is stuck in auto mode, please let me know because that's just, no one should be shooting in auto mode. Um, we can help. A gathering near the downtown dam on the Des Moines River was nestled underneath a signature pedestrian bridge. The scene provides a mix of outdoor scenery with varying light and motion. I'm doing this for like four and a half minutes. Yeah. Well, I do HDR sometimes. I do what's called manual blending. I will take certain parts of certain pictures and put them, overlay them on top of one another but they are all the same photo from the same exact location at the same time, just different exposures. So this one, your skies are overblown. They're done. You can't fix that, but... You're not clipping those, so you can close them. Or the highlights a yeah. bit, or do a on the top. What, uh, what I would, my personal preference, when we go to the first one, to keep this one and bring out all your shadows and everything here, because you'll have a perfect sky there. Okay, so many people have questions and so many people are interacting on Facebook. Why don't I try to put something together to where we can bring people away from Facebook for a minute and actually get everyone to interact in person and come and take pictures on site, ask those questions on site, and everyone seems to be learning a lot when they come out to these events. The combination of multiple exposures and indie filters creates a different vibe to Mirza's photos. The turbulent dam waters smooth to a shimmer under the low light and long exposure. While it's an atmospheric look that some photographers avoid, Mirza embraces it, much like he's embraced his new home right here in Iowa. We just have so much. We have the skyline, we have the Women's Achievement Bridge, we have the river down there. Uh, if you turn this way, you have the capital. You can go over to the Grays Lake and get great pictures of the skyline of the lake. There's just so the possibilities are endless here, and you can be as creative as you want to be in Des Moines. Back on the parking garages of downtown Des Moines, Mirza finds the urban environment every bit as inviting as a rural scenic. It's his version of the Iowa outdoors. Just go out there, take pictures, and explore. Don't, you know, it's a lot more fun than sitting on the couch. It's time for IPTV's Trail in a Minute, where we show you a first person view of a different Iowa hiking, biking, or water trail each episode. It's a great chance to relive a previous outdoor experience or to plan a future adventure. And it's a pretty cool way to view the Iowa outdoors. Take a look. For hikers and bikers who find themselves in southeastern Iowa, the Mahaska County Recreation Trail offers a fantastic tour of Oskaloosa. Looping around the entire town, Mahaska's Rec Trail offers 15 miles of twists and turns to take in all Oski has to offer. Cutting through neighborhoods and community parks, 
the Wreck Trail offers dozens of spots visitors can join the path. So if you can't hit all 15 miles your first visit, there's plenty of parking to plan a return trip. On the southwestern edge of the trail is Edmondson Park, hosting five shelters, the community pool, and a golf course. Edmondson is an outdoor adventure in its own right. On the southeast side of the trail, you'll pass through the now-closed Bernard College before hitting the gravel part of the path. Still being developed, the Wreck Trail passes through scenic woodlands, local farm fields, and multiple underpasses. As the Wreck Trail loop starts to close, visitors will pass by a pride of the town, the Lacey Sports Complex, home to community football, softball, and soccer. The Mahaska Community Recreation Trail is definitely an adventure that takes more than a minute. That wraps up this episode of our seventh season of Iowa Outdoors. We encourage you to get outside and enjoy Iowa's parks and recreational opportunities. If you're planning any outdoor travel, check out our extensive video archive of adventures at iptv.org slash Iowa Outdoors. Our latest season of Iowa Outdoors continues with more episodes than ever before with extra stories from every corner of our state. We'll leave you now with more images of Iowa's outdoor environments. Funding for Iowa Outdoors is provided by the Claude P. Small, Catherine Small Cousins, and William Carl Cousins Fund at the Lincoln Way Community Foundation in Clinton County to support nature programming on Iowa Public Television. And by the Alliant Energy Foundation. Many of Iowa's natural wonders you'll find on Iowa Public Television can be found in Iowa Outdoors Magazine, the Iowa DNR's premier resource for conservation, education, and recreation activities. Subscription information can be found online at iowadnr.gov.